What if the story of the world's greatest seafaring migration wasn't just written in ancient maps or oral legends, but hidden deep inside our DNA? Centuries before the age of compasses, engines, or even written records, a mysterious group of people set out across the Pacific Ocean. They were the Lapida, daring navigators, who carved a path across thousands of miles of open water. With nothing but the stars above and the winds at their back, they reached islands no human had ever seen. From the shores of Papua New Guinea all the way to Tonga and Samoa, they left behind a trail of exquisitely patterned pottery and a genetic legacy that still lives on in millions today. But who were they, really? For decades, scholars debated their origins. Some believed they came from Southeast Asia. Others thought they were rooted in the islands of Melanesia. Archaeologists, linguists, and historians offered compelling theories, but they all lacked one crucial piece, genetic evidence. That all changed recently, thanks to breakthrough studies of ancient human remains buried with lapida pottery. Scientists have cracked open a new chapter in Pacific history, and what they found was stunning. The lapida weren't just a mix of old island populations. Their DNA reveals an epic tale of migration, intermarriage, and identity unlike anything previously imagined. In this video, we're diving into the groundbreaking science behind the Lapita people's origins and how their ancient DNA is helping us understand the roots of Polynesians, Micronesians, and many Pacific Islanders today. Get ready to set sail on a journey of discovery, guided not by stars this time, but by science. The discovery of the Lapita culture began with something as simple as broken pottery. But what those shards revealed would rewrite the early history of the Pacific. In the mid-20th century, archaeologists working in sites across the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, and New Caledonia began uncovering a distinct style of pottery, decorated with intricate dentate stamp patterns. These pots, found in ancient burial grounds and coastal settlements, didn't match the designs of any known local tradition. They pointed to a people with a shared cultural identity that stretched across thousands of miles of ocean. Named after the site of Lapida in New Caledonia, where the pottery was first recognized, the Lapida culture soon emerged as one of the most significant archaeological discoveries in Oceania. What made them truly remarkable wasn't just their distinctive ceramics. It was the reach of their voyages. As more excavation sites were studied, Researchers traced a migration pattern that spanned from near Oceania, including places like Papua New Guinea, all the way into remote Oceania, the islands of Fiji, Tonga, and Samoa. This movement occurred roughly between 1500 BCE and 500 BCE, making the Lapita people the first humans to intentionally settle the far-flung islands of the Pacific. Their ability to traverse such vast distances suggested that the Lapita were expert sailors. They built double-hulled canoes, navigated by reading stars, ocean swells, and bird movements, and had a deep understanding of wind patterns. These weren't random island hoppers. They were skilled mariners who expanded their world through knowledge, planning, and generations of exploration. Beyond their sailing skills, the Lapida brought with them a fully formed culture. They carried domesticated animals, planted taro and yam, and transported obsidian and shell tools. They practiced tattooing and likely maintained complex oral traditions to preserve their navigational and cultural knowledge. Even though they lived in scattered island groups, the shared style of their pottery and tools shows they maintained cultural links over long distances. What's especially fascinating is how the Lapida seemed to blend adaptability with continuity. In each new environment, they adjusted their lifestyle to suit the local resources. Yet across time and space, their cultural identity remained intact, a feat that few ancient societies could accomplish across such extreme distances. Today, remnants of Lapida pottery continue to be unearthed, sometimes washed ashore after storms, other times found in sacred burial sites. These artifacts offer a tangible connection to a people who didn't just travel the ocean. They understood and thrived in it. Before the breakthroughs in genetic research, Scholars relied heavily on archaeology, linguistics, and cultural anthropology to trace the origins of the Lapita people. One of the most widely accepted ideas was that they were early members of the Austronesian language family, 
a vast group that spans from Taiwan through Southeast Asia to the far corners of the Pacific. The theory held that the ancestors of the Lapita culture began their migration thousands of years ago from southern China or Taiwan, slowly island hopping through the Philippines and eastern Indonesia before reaching near Oceania. This Austronesian connection was supported by linguistic similarities between modern Polynesian and Southeast Asian languages. Vocabulary, syntax, and even certain phonetic structures hinted at a shared ancestral language. Based on these connections, many researchers believe that the people who would become the Lapita brought not only a language, but also specific agricultural practices, animal domestication, and maritime technology from Southeast Asia. Another key part of the early theory involved cultural diffusion. Scholars noted similarities in pottery design, social organization, and religious beliefs across island cultures and parts of Southeast Asia. The dentate stamped pottery, a hallmark of lapidocytes, bore resemblance to ceramics found in earlier Neolithic communities further west. This fueled the idea that the lapida were not an isolated development, but rather a cultural offshoot of long-migrating maritime peoples. However, not all theories were in full agreement. Some archaeologists proposed a more blended origin, suggesting that while the Lapida people may have come from Asia, they quickly mixed with indigenous populations in Melanesia, especially in areas like Papua New Guinea. This would explain the mix of cultural traits, Austronesian language patterns, and seafaring skills combined with regional stone tool traditions and localized burial customs. There were still many gaps, though. For example, the spread of the Lapida culture happened relatively quickly across a vast ocean expanse, yet the archaeological record sometimes showed inconsistent patterns of settlement. Moreover, the nature of the interaction between incoming Austronesian speakers and indigenous Papuan groups remained murky. Did the Lapida displace earlier populations, or did they integrate with them? The data wasn't always clear. Linguists and archaeologists debated these questions for decades, relying on fragments, potsherds, canoe styles, and mythologies passed down through oral traditions. These clues helped sketch a rough migration map, but without biological evidence, it was hard to determine exactly who the Lapida were at the genetic level. In short, before the DNA studies, most theories painted the Lapida as a branch of Austronesian voyagers, strongly influenced by their Southeast Asian roots, but also touched by Melanesian interaction. While this framework provided valuable insights, it was limited by the tools of the time, and some assumptions were built more on cultural similarities than hard evidence. That would all change once ancient DNA came into the picture transforming educated guesses into measurable facts. For decades, the story of the Lapida people was shaped by pottery shards and language patterns. But then came a game-changer, ancient DNA. In the past few years, scientists managed to extract and analyze DNA from human remains found in Lapida-associated burial sites, particularly from islands like Vanuatu and Tonga. This was the moment everything started to shift. The results were unexpected. Early Lapida individuals turned out to be genetically much closer to East Asians than to the Melanesians living in the same region today. This challenged long-standing assumptions that the Lapida were already a heavily mixed group by the time they reached remote Oceania. Instead, it appears the first Lapida settlers had minimal to no Papuan ancestry when they initially spread across the Pacific. What surprised scientists even more was how later generations showed increasing levels of Papuan ancestry, but with a twist. Much of this genetic input came through women. This means that as the Lapida communities began settling and mingling with local Melanesian groups, Papuan women joined these expanding societies, leaving a clear mark in the genetic record. This female-mediated gene flow is now one of the clearest patterns in the DNA of Polynesian and Micronesian populations. The power of this genetic breakthrough lies in what it confirms and what it challenges. It supports the Austronesian migration model, but clarifies that cultural mixing with Melanesians happened later, not during the earliest voyages. DNA has filled in the gaps left by pottery and oral histories, providing a clearer picture of who the Lapida people really were, not just by what they made or where they sailed, 
but by the ancestry they carried in their bones. Lapida people didn't appear in the Pacific by chance. They were part of a much larger human story known as the Austronesian Expansion, one of the greatest migration events in human history. This movement began thousands of years ago in what is today Taiwan. From there, Austronesian-speaking people began spreading southward and eastward through the Philippines, Indonesia, and eventually into the Pacific Ocean. By the time the Lapida culture emerged around 1500 BCE, this wave of migration had gathered momentum. What made the Lapida unique was how far they pushed that boundary. Using advanced sailing and navigation skills, they were the first to move beyond the safety of near Oceania, the regions closest to the Asian continent, and venture into remote Oceania, which includes places like Tonga, Fiji, and Samoa. This was a monumental leap, as these islands couldn't be seen from the shorelines of previously inhabited lands. Genetically, the Lapida carried with them the DNA signature of their Austronesian ancestors, primarily from East Asia. Over time, they also acquired genetic contributions from the Papuan populations of Melanesia, especially as they settled and intermarried. However, early Lapida remains still show a strong link to their East Asian origins, confirming they were among the first Austronesians to cross such vast distances. This expansion was more than a movement of people. It also meant the spread of languages, cultural practices, and domesticated plants and animals. Today, the descendants of Lapida navigators live across the Pacific, from Micronesia to New Zealand, speaking languages that trace back to that same Austronesian family. Through DNA, we can now see just how deep this legacy runs, not just across the map, but through the bloodlines of an entire ocean. As the Lapida people voyaged eastward across the Pacific, their journey brought them face to face with the long-established populations of Melanesia, groups with deep roots in New Guinea, the Bismarck Archipelago, and the Solomon Islands. These indigenous Melanesians, often referred to as Papuan peoples in genetic studies, had lived in the region for tens of thousands of years, developing rich languages, traditions, and distinct genetic traits that set them apart from the newly arriving Austronesian-speaking Lapida. At first, archaeological and genetic evidence suggests that the Lapida settlers remained somewhat isolated from the Melanesian populations. Early Lapida burial sites, particularly those on the edges of near Oceania, show surprisingly little Papuan genetic influence. This has led researchers to believe that the initial Lapida communities maintained tight-knit societies, likely due to cultural differences, language barriers, or maritime-focused lifestyles that kept them relatively separated from local populations. But this isolation didn't last. Over generations, as Lapida groups settled permanently in Melanesian territories, intermarriage and cultural exchange began to shape a new, blended identity. Genetic studies show that later Lapida descendants had a growing proportion of Papuan ancestry. Interestingly, the gene flow appears to have been matrilineal in many cases, meaning Papuan women joined Austronesian-speaking Lapida communities more often than the reverse. This blending not only reshaped the genetic profile of these island societies, but also influenced language, social structure, and even farming and fishing techniques. This cultural fusion is especially visible in places like Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands, and parts of Fiji. Today, people from these islands often speak Austronesian languages, but show clear signs of Papuan genetic heritage, a living record of the ancient meeting and merging of two worlds. Rather than a story of conquest or dominance, the interaction between Lapida and Melanesian populations appears to have been gradual and cooperative. Communities adapted, exchanged ideas, and evolved together. The legacy of this encounter lives on not just in genetics, but in the food, music, traditions, and faces of modern Pacific Islanders. The Lapida journey didn't erase the peoples who came before them. It helped create something entirely new. The Lapida people may have vanished as a distinct culture thousands of years ago, but their genetic legacy continues to thrive across the Pacific. Through ancient DNA analysis and modern population studies, scientists have traced a remarkable thread of ancestry linking the Lapida to present-day Polynesians, Micronesians, and some coastal Melanesian groups. 
This legacy isn't just a scientific curiosity. It's a powerful reminder of how the past lives on in the bodies and identities of people today. When we look at the genetic makeup of modern Polynesians in places like Samoa, Tonga, and Hawaii, we find that up to 70% of their ancestry can be traced back to Lapita-related populations. These are the very same seafaring people who launched the first long-distance voyages into the Pacific using nothing but the stars, ocean swells, and deep ancestral knowledge. Their genes carried with them not just biological traits, but the spirit of exploration and adaptation. Micronesian populations, especially those in the eastern region, also show a strong Lapida genetic signature. However, these communities often reflect a more complex mixture, shaped by later migrations and regional interactions. In parts of Melanesia, particularly along coastal areas where Lapida settlements once thrived, people today carry a genetic blend of both Papuan and Lapida ancestry, a living record of intermarriage, cultural exchange, and hybrid identity. Beyond genetics, the influence of a Lapida endures in cultural elements. Their pottery styles, though no longer made, set the foundation for regional aesthetics. Their navigational practices inspired generations of voyagers who later settled the furthest corners of the Pacific. And their languages, descended from Austronesian roots, remain the dominant tongues across thousands of islands. Today, genetic research has sparked a resurgence of interest in Lapita ancestry among Pacific Islanders. In some communities, this scientific validation of oral traditions has reignited pride and curiosity. People are rediscovering the power of their roots, not just through myths or family stories, but through their very DNA. The Lapita weren't just the first to cross oceans, they were architects of Pacific identity. And even though their name might not be widely known, their legacy is carried in every heartbeat from Fiji to Rapa Nui. For generations, the story of how the Pacific was settled relied heavily on oral tradition, scattered artifacts, and educated guesses. But now DNA has become a powerful tool, not just to confirm old theories, but to challenge them and write new ones. Thanks to the science of ancient genetics, the Lapida people have emerged as a central puzzle piece in the vast and complex picture of Pacific origins. By studying ancient remains and comparing them with the DNA of people living in the Pacific today, scientists have shown that the first great wave of ocean migration, the one that gave rise to the Polynesians, Micronesians, and parts of Melanesia, began with the Lapida. Their genome tells a story of movement, mixing, and survival over thousands of miles and countless generations. This has reshaped how we understand the history of Oceania. No longer are the Pacific Islands viewed as isolated dots on a map. They are now recognized as deeply connected, genetically, culturally, and historically, through the movements of people who carried shared ancestry and knowledge across vast distances. The Lapita were not primitive islanders. They were innovators, navigators, and founders of civilizations. But perhaps the most powerful impact of this genetic research is personal. It allows Pacific Islanders to see their history reflected in both the mirror and the microscope. The same blood that once coursed through the veins of ancient Lapida voyagers flows through today's Islanders, a continuous thread that links past to present. In the end, DNA doesn't just rewrite textbooks. It reconnects people to their origins, validates cultural memory, and gives a voice to ancestors who once crossed open seas chasing stars and leaving behind more than just pottery, they left behind themselves.